All right, this is this is actually the last section of this chapter. Did you know that? So 4-7 is going to be it for chapter 7. So what do you think is coming up pretty soon here? Yeah, we'll probably have a test. So uh, my guess is, what's today, Wednesday? Yeah, my guess is early next week. Okay. <laughs> All right. I don't think... Shh, she said gosh. So um, I don't think... Um, yeah, today I'm not going to finish it today. All right, I th did I write that on the lesson plan? Yeah, yeah. That it's two days. Yeah, so it's two days. Plus I got a worksheet on this thing too. So um, sometime next week. I can't tell you exactly when. We'll figure it out when we get there. All right. Uh, what does that mean? Coordinate geometry. Coordinate. Um, Give me g graphs. Very good. Okay, it's graphs. We've talked about that before, right? Didn't we do graphing in yeah. here earlier? But did we do it in here? Did we yeah, did we do graphing in here? We had a whole little section on it, right? Plot and points. Yeah, because we did midpoint, distance, all that stuff. Yeah, okay. Just got to remind me because I teach. I teach three geometry classes, but we're all in different chapters. All right, so it's hard for me to remember what class we did when and all that. All right, so uh, what we're going to do is they give you a, I'll tell you what, let's get a graph on here. They give you a, a triangle in a graph. So this time we're not just graphing points or lines. We're actually going to have a triangle in a graph. All right, so that's a little bit different. So let's put that right there. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And so how many points is it going to take to um, to graph a triangle? Three. Three. That's right. All right. So I'm going to use the example that they use in the book. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to write down the points here. So they call point A, negative 7, 1. Uh, B is 1, negative 5. And then C is 7, 3. All right. So what I want to do is I want to, I want to make a triangle in a graph with those points. That's the coordinate part, right? Coordinate tri uh, geometry of triangle. So we're going to make a triangle here. So let's put point A in here. It's negative 7, 1. So let's count over. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1 is right there. So that's point A. Point B is 1, negative 5. So we go 1, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right there. That's B. And then C is 7, 3. There's 7, 1, 2, 3. And that's C. Now, to make a triangle out of it, what do we have to do? Connect Just connect them all. Just connect all the dots. All right, connect that one and that one, this one and this one, and then this one and this one. Look at that. We got a triangle. What do you think we're going to call that triangle? Um, it's looking like what is triangle? Just, what's the name of the triangle? It's easy. The name of the triangle, not what kind of triangle it is, just the name of it. It's triangle ABC. All right. So what we're going to do is this. We are going to find something we found before already. We know how to do this already, but this time we're going to do it with a triangle. We're going to find the midpoint of each side. All right. Everybody remembers how to do midpoint, correct? All right. And then we're going to find the length of each of the sides. All right. We're going to do that for a reason. All right. So I'm not going to tell you the reason just yet. Let's slide this over a little bit to here. All right, and then we can get rid of this little ABC. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to find, uh, let's do the slopes first. Slope's a little bit easier, I think, don't you? Yeah. All right, so let's, did I say midpoint earlier? Yeah. Yeah, I messed up. Um, we are going to do the midpoint. But right now, we're just going to do slope and distance, OK? So let's find the slopes of all three of these. So let's do AB first. Is that all right? So oops, let's do AB. So you could come over here and count on the graph if you wanted to, couldn't you? Just rise and run. That'd be perfectly fine. But let's do it like more mathematically. So what will we do? We come over here. There's A, B. There's point A. There's point B. I want to find the slope. So how do I find the slope? It's the change in what? 
The change in something over the change in something. What is it? The change in, what is it? The y, right. It's the change in y over the change in x. Or just subtract the y's, right? y1 minus y2 or y2 minus y1. So we just subtract the y. So here's point AB. So which one are the y's here? Negative 7. It's this 1 and this negative 5. Right, right. Those are my y's. So what do I do with them? I subtract them. So it's 1 minus negative 5. Everybody got that? And then the x is what? You got to do it in the same order. Okay, if I went the, t the first one minus the second one, thank you, then I have to go what? Negative 7. What's this going to be? Negative 7 what? Minus 1. Minus one. Okay, let's figure out what this is. Well, just that. It's going to be a 6 over, that's negative 8. Reduce it, always reduce it. So what's that going to be? 3 over negative 4, negative 3 fourths. Everybody with me on that? All right, so that's the slope of AB. We're doing this for a reason, all right? I promise. Uh, let's do another one. Let's do BC next. We'll go a little faster. So the slope of BC. BC, so it's negative 5 minus 3. It's the change in Y, then the change in X is 1 minus 7. So this is negative 8 over negative 6. And what is that? That's positive 4 over 3. Nope, pretty easy so far, right? I got one more side I got to find the slope of. That's AC, so let's do AC. All right, so the slope is... So I'm going to do that first one and this bottom one. So what am I going to subtract? Yeah, 1 minus 3 and negative 7 minus 7. All right, that's going to be a negative 2. That's going to be a negative 14. What does this come out to be? Positive 1 over what? 7. All right, good so far, right? All right. Negative 7 minus 7, okay? Uh, let's put this in here. So AB, what's the slope? It's negative 3 fourths, right? The slope of that one right there. And then BC, this one right here, is 4 thirds. And then this one is what? 1 seventh. Those are the slopes. It's not how long it is. It's, it's the uh, slope, how steep it is. Everybody good so far? All right. I'm just going to get rid of all of this. And then, what, I, what else did I say we were going to find? The yeah, the length or the distances. Okay, so let's find the distance of each of those. All right, let's go do the same order that we did before. So AB, so let's find the distance. Remember how to find the distance? Was this, was this chapter 4 or was it chapter 3? I think it was chapter 3, wasn't it? Yeah, so you've already been tested on it. You've had a quiz on it. You've had homeworks on it and all that kind of stuff. Do you remember what it is? The formula? It's Yeah, but before that, it's a big old square root, okay? Then I'm going to put parentheses squared plus parentheses squared. Now, what do I do inside that first parentheses? Yeah, subtract the x's from each other, okay? It really doesn't matter what order you do it in, to tell you the truth, but just take the x's and subtract them and put it here. So let's do that for a, b. So it's, let's do this in our head. What's negative 7 minus 1? Uh, negative 7 minus 1. Negative 8. Negative 8. Okay, let's do the y's. So it's 1 minus negative 5. What's 1 minus negative 5? Negative 6. How about positive 6? But it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive because what are you going to do with those numbers? You're going to square them. And if I square a negative, you're going to end up with a positive anyway, aren't you? Yeah. All right, so let's do this. Uh, negative 8 squared. Again, squaring the negative just makes it positive. So what's 8 squared? 64 plus 6 squared is 36. What is that? Square root of. It's not 100. It's the square root of 100. That's super important. What? What number times itself is equal to 100? 10. So 10 is it. All right. So that's AB. Stop. So the length of AB, it's in yellow. That's 10. All right, it's not the slope, it's just how long the line is, the line segment, that side of the triangle is 10. Everybody with me? Okay, let's do another one. Let's do uh, BC. Again, I'm going to go a little faster. 
put parentheses squared plus parentheses squared. All right, subtract the x's on BC. So you could, it doesn't matter what order you go in. You could go 1 minus 7 or you go 7 minus 1. Let's do that in our head. 7 minus 1 is 6. Let's do the y's. Negative 5 minus 3 or 3 minus negative 5. It doesn't matter. What do you get? You get 8. Okay. So what's this going to be? That's going to be 36. This is going to be what? 64. Guess what? Square root of 100. What's the square root of 100? It's 10. All right. And now let's do AC. Let's find the distance of AC. Again, there's a reason why we're doing this, so just bear with me. And we're going to have to do a little bit of extra stuff, too, for the next thing I'm going to show you. Um, subtract the x's for AC. So it's negative 7 minus 7. We've already done that. What's that? Negative 14 or just 14, right? doesn't matter if it's negative or positive because you're going to square the negative anyway. All right, let's do the y's. So it's uh, 1 minus 3 or 3 minus 1, which is 2, right? Uh, 14 squared, I should know that off the top of my head. Uh, 196, so it's 196 plus what? 4, what's that? The square root of 200, okay? It's not. 20 times 20 is 200? There's actually no number. There's no just two whole numbers that multiply together to get 200. Um, I'm not going to expect you to be able to do this, but I'm going to show you. This is something you should have learned in Algebra 1, but it seems like I say that all the time, and kids are like, nah, no idea what you're talking about. So, so this is, listen, this is Algebra 1 stuff. I'm going to show you really quick. The square root of 200. I could rewrite square root of 200 as 100 times 2. Would you agree? All right. So in algebra, in algebra 1 should be, there's a rule that says when you have two things that are multiplied together underneath the square root, we can do this. We can separate them so that they're both under their own square root. You see that? So I took the 100 and the 2, I put that under a square root, and I put the 2 under a square root. There's a rule that says we're allowed to do that in algebra. You never learned that before? No. Okay, now you have. So you can't tell anybody that you didn't learn this. So what is the square root of 100? It's 10. What is the square root of 2? It's just, it's not a 2. It's the square root of 2, all right? It's different. The square root of 2, here, I'll bring up my fancy calculator. Have I shown you my fancy calculator yet? If I click on it, there it goes. Well, it looks like this. Isn't that cool? What? It's just a, it's just a little program, just a little thing I downloaded, graphing calculator. Um, so watch this. Somebody said, I said, what's the square root of two? And somebody said two. Well, two and the square root of two are completely different. Let's see what the square root of two is. In fact, let's just take a wild guess. So what number times itself is equal to two? Well, there's no whole number. Two doesn't work because two times two is four. Okay. It's probably one point something, right? It's probably somewhere between one and two. Would you agree? Because 1 squared is what? 1, right? And then 2 squared is 4. So it's got to be somewhere between 1 and 2. All right? So here's how you do it on this calculator. Hit the second function. Hit this. See, there's your square root button. There's 2. Close the parentheses. Hit enter. There it is. So it's not 1.5, but it's pretty close. It's 1.4 and then blah, blah, blah. Right? So the square root of 2 is actually equal to 1.4. Is that the same thing as 2? No. no. All right, so the square root of 2 is a lot different, isn't it, than just plain old 2? Everybody got that? Okay, enough of that. Let's delete that. Okay, so anyway, if you were to simplify it, you could simplify it like that. So that's nice. We've done all that. Uh, BC, what was BC? That was 10. And what is this? It's 10 times the square root of 2. This is, we're at a point here where I'd love to teach you about this, um, but if you have two sides that are 10, you could find that third side um, if you knew something about one of the angles in here, and that's what we're going to look at. Let's take a look at the slopes. Okay, look at the slopes. Slope of this is negative 3 fourths. The slope of this is 4 thirds. Slope of that is 1 seventh. 
Is there some kind of relationship between negative three-fourths and four-thirds? This is something that we have talked about in the past. Uh, they're, We're, they're negative reciprocals of each other, which means what? So lights should be going off, bells should be ringing, all right? Alarms should be going off in your head saying, oh, if I have negative reciprocals, what does that mean about AB and BC? Quadrilateral. Quadrilateral. Are you just saying words that you don't know what they mean? <laughs> this is not a quadrilateral, it's a triangle. So quadrilateral's got nothing to do with it. But negative reciprocals, we have talked about that. We had a test on it. We had quiz on it. No? Anaya, tell me. <laughs> What's true about these two sides then? The op. They're equal? Okay, they are equal, but they're only equal because they're both 10. They're not equal because of the slopes or negative reciprocals. That's not why. But the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So that, that must mean that that uh, doesn't mean they're isosceles. Now, they are isosceles because you got a 10 and a 10. But I'm just looking at the three fourths, the negative three fourths, and the positive four thirds. What does that tell you about these two lines if they're negative reciprocals of each other? They have a right angle. It's a right angle. They're perpendicular. They're perpendicular. Okay? Do you remember that from chapter three? Apparently not. <laughs> okay. Now that you're reminded, do you remember it now? Yeah. Okay. So that must mean they're perpendicular, which means that's a what? That's a right angle. All right. So that's pretty important, okay, to, to see later on. But right now, it really doesn't matter. But I just thought I'd bring that up because I just thought for sure you would see that. You're like, oh, yeah, that's – let me get rid of this. If they're negative reciprocals, that must mean they're perpendicular. That's what I was hoping everybody would say. But <laughs> guess not. I dream too big, I guess. Uh, I, let's keep those there. All right. Now, with all that said, what we're going to do is this. I'm going to find a couple other things. I'm going to find the midpoint now. Remember we did that section on Chapter 3 where we did, we did the distance, we did midpoint, we did slopes. Well, all that is coming back, all right, to revisit us because we're going to use it. That's why we learned it. We were supposed to learn it anyway in Chapter 3. Now it's going to come back. So now let's find... Go different color. Let's go green. Okay, let's find the midpoint of uh, AC. Let's find the midpoint of all three of them. Yep, yeah, let's do that. Let's find the midpoint of all three. So let's go AB again. All right, so I'm going to go kind of quick because when's this over? Quarter after? 15. Yeah, 15. quarter after. <laughs> That's the old man way of saying it. You ever say you ever say that? Do you ever say quarter after? Yeah, I do. Okay. Right, fifteen minutes. Right, fifteen minutes is is a quarter of an hour. All right, enough of that. So midpoint. What's the midpoint? Do you remember how to find the midpoint? So you put it over two. Put it over two. It's coming back to you. What do you do with the x's? You add them this time. Okay. So I'm doing a b. So you add them. Let's just add them in our head. What's negative seven plus one? How about negative 6? Let's add these. What's 1 plus negative 5? It's the same as 1 minus 5, which is negative 4. So what's the midpoint? It's negative 3 over negative 2. You with me so far? Okay. Let's do the midpoint of AB. Let's go BC. All right. So let's do that. Everybody should be able to figure this out now. That's over 2. That's over 2. So what do we do with the x's? You add them up of BC. So add them up. 1 plus 7 is 8. And then what? Negative 5 over 3. It's not a 2. It's what? It's negative 2. And then let's simplify it. What's that? 4, negative 1. We're doing this for a reason. I promise. And then AC. Let's find the midpoint. All right. Put that over 2. Put that over 2. Add the x's to AC. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0. Uh, what's 1 plus 3? Four. That's 4. 0 over 2 is 0. 4 over 2 is 2. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to plot it on this graph. 
All right, let's plot it. We'll do it in green so that it's going to look a little messy, but you'll get it. Negative 3, negative 2. So 1, 2, 3, 1. Whoops. 1, 2, 3. Ooh, I didn't. Let's do this. It should. Negative 3. Oh, negative 2. No wonder. <laughs> Somebody stopped me. Nobody was going to stop me. 1, 2, 3, negative 2, right here. Don't be scared. It's all right. All right. So that's the midpoint of AB, right? Negative 3, negative 2. What about BC, this one right here? It's 4, negative 1. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. It's right there. Okay, I know it's a little messy in here. We can at least get rid of that circle, can't we? We don't need that. Don't need that. We really don't need the tens. That really, it's not going to have any significance on what we're doing right now. And that 10 square root of 2 is not going to have any significance. The other stuff, I think, is going to be important. All right. So uh, what's the other one? 0, 2. 0, 2, right there. Oops, I did it in yellow. Sorry. Let's do it in green. Let's keep everything consistent. All right, so here we go. What we're going to do is connect the green ones. And we make another triangle, but it's not what we're really concerned about. All right, we're almost there. <laughs> I'm going to do one more thing. I know there's a lot of stuff that we're doing to this, but I think it's important to see. All right. Uh, remember at AB, the slope was negative 3 fourths? Tell me what the slope from 0, 2, I could rename these, but from 0, 2, that point right there, to this point right there, BC, which is what, 4, negative 1? Everybody see it? I'll tell you what, let's guess first. Look at AB. Do you see how AB is slanting in that direction? What is this? Let's call this ABC what? D, E, F. Is that all right? Uh, we're going to put E right there and F right there. Okay. So look at D, E. Look at that's the way it slants and the way AB slants. What do you think? They look parallel, don't they? All right. He said almost, and that's good. I like that you said almost because we don't really know that they're parallel. But how can we figure out if they're parallel or not? If you find their slopes and then do what to their slopes? Find, or we're going to look at the slopes and look if they're what? We're going to compare them. We're going to compare them is what I should have said. And if they're equal to each other, that's right. If they're equal to each other, then what's true about DE and AB? They're then they're parallel to each other. So let's see. Let's see if it is. Do you think it is? Yeah. All right, let's try it. I'm kind of excited about this, aren't you? <laughs> Not that excited, but anyway. So um, the slope equals M is a slope. How do we find the slope? Change in Y or change in X. So it's 2 minus negative 1 over 0 minus 4. What do we get? 3 over negative 4. How about that? So this green one right there is also negative 3 fourths. So tell me something about AB and DE. They have the same slopes, so what must be true about them? They must be parallel to each other. Okay, there's your little symbol for parallel. Okay? So that's kind of interesting, isn't it? So look at that. Now, I'm not going to do all the work because of time, but this is negative 3 fourths. What do you think the slope from F to E is going to be? Just looking at that picture without doing any math, what do you think it probably is? It's 1 seventh, and it is. You do the math, okay, find the slopes between F and E, find the slope between F and E. Yep, you'll find out that this has the same slope as that. So what's true about AC and FE? They are also what? Parallel to each other. We got one more to look at, don't we? We got this one, DF. What does it look like DF and CB? Looks like they got the same slope. So if this slope is 4 thirds, what's this, what should this be? It should also be 4 thirds, and it is. All right? That's super important. Now let's take a look at the, uh, the lengths. Let's just do one of them, okay? I'm going to get rid of all of this. Let's just take a look 
at the length of one of them. Let's do um, DE. Is that all right? Oh, I forgot. Did you write down these points? I just erased them. I'll tell you what. Let's do that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so which one was D? Zero, two. And then which one was E? Four, negative one. Correct? All right. So let's do, uh, sorry. <laughs> just trying to do this as easy as I can. Let's copy that. Now we can get rid of all this mess. I'm just going to put it back. Let's get rid of all this. Oh, sorry. Oops. I'll tell you what, I'll just move it over here. All right. So now what I want to do is I just want to find, I'm going to do one more distance. That's all I'm going to do. Okay. So the distance equals square root. I want to find the distance between point D and point E. And you're going to find out something about those distances. Remember I erased the yellow ones? I should have kept them on there for this one. That's right. What was AB? What was that? Remember? It was 10, wasn't it? The length of it. So look at DE. Let's find the distance from D to E. Oops. Put, put a plus in there. Now, we didn't find the distance between the midpoints. We found the distance of the actual sides of the triangle. Okay? So let's do this. So what do we do? Add up the x's. What do we get? 4. Add up that. We get 1. And what do we get? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Did I do that right? Oh, crap. What did I do? Does not come out the way it should. Did I mess up? Was that D? D was 0, 2, right? And this was 4, negative 1. We're finding the length of it. Oh, my word. What did I do wrong? I did something wrong. I had to. Well, <laughs> 16 plus 1, that's 17. Ah, oh, crap. I was on such a roll. Did I do anything wrong? Because I'm trying to find the distance between here and here. That's 0, 2, right? This is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1 right there. Did I do the distance right? I did, didn't I? I added up, right, the x's, and I added up the y's. This should not come out that. Yes, of course. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that still comes out the same, doesn't it? I'm supposed to subtract. I just got done doing midpoint. I added, and I added here. And, f and we finally figured it out. So, well, no? Oh, yeah, you're supposed to subtract. So it's negative 1 minus 16. Yep, it works. Okay, so negative 1, just hang on. Negative 1 minus 2 is what? Negative 3. So what's this? 16 plus what? 9, which is the square root of 25, which is what? Five. Okay. Whew. Thank goodness. I was about to have a heart attack. Now, here's the key. Watch this very carefully, then you can go. Look at AB. How long is AB? It's 10. And how long did we say DE was? It was 5. That's 5, and that's 10. Tell me something about that little segment that connects the midpoints. First of all, it's parallel to this, right? And it's, it's how much of it? It's half of it. That's right. So this thing right here, DE is considered a thing called a mid-segment. Mid-segment, okay? So we got three mid-segments in here. I just picked the one, okay? So DE is a, DE is a mid-segment to AB. Two things are true. What's true about it? They're parallel to each other. They have the same slope. And what else? The mid-segment is half of the side that is opposite. You see it? Okay. So. What's the length of DF then? It's half of this 10. Remember this was 10? Okay. What was the distance, what was the, the length of AC? Do you remember what it was? It was 10 squared to 2. Okay. So what's the length of FE? No. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So it was 10 squared to 2. I'm sorry, 10 squared to 2, and you take divided by 2. So what's the length of FE? It's 5 squared to 2. Okay? All right. Did I assign something for today? All right. Whatever's on the works, whatever's on the thing. Yeah, 1 to 16. 1 to 16 is what you're doing tonight. Okay? It's section 4 7. Section 4 7, 1 to 16. There's, I don't give any extra credit. Sorry. Um, just make sure you keep on turning your homework in and just do better on the quiz and test. I mean, we'll have a test next week. So that's the biggest thing. That's a huge thing. Okay. Thank you. All right. No problem.